Fun fact, every time you prove to Google that you're not a robot, you're helping them build a better self-driving car. Let me explain. If you're old like me, your back constantly hurts, but you'll also remember that in the past, Capture, a company Google purchased in 2009, used words to prove you're not a robot. But they also used that data to teach their character recognition software. Google could have hired thousands of people to sit at desks all day long, or they could outsource it to us for free. In a matter of months, millions of people had helped successfully digitize 20 years of the New York Times archive. Google took notice and purchased them for $28 million. That's $18.40 in today's money. Then they got started digitizing thousands of books and building out the Google Books library. So now our baby can read, it's time for them to try numbers and images. That's why for a while, Capture had basic mass problems for us to solve, and today it's largely images of roads. For context, this is now 2014, and we've been fueling Capture with data for five years. In Google's own tests, humans were typing out the word correctly 33% of the time, whereas the machine learning bot that our data taught typed out the word correctly 99% of the time. Scary. Today, we're helping train Google's AI to understand what a mountain looks like, as well as zebra crossings, taxis, cars, buses, you name it, they're showing it to us. But how does Google even know if you got it right? They don't. It banks on us not only wanting to be correct for the sake of our own egos, but because we want to access the page that we're trying to load. So if they show the same image to a million people and 999,991 of them claim it's a bus, they can say with almost certainty that it's a bus. We're helping train their AI to tell the difference between a real cow and a Ben and Jerry's truck. It's also the reason why most of these images are shown from the perspective that you'd see from a driver's seat. That's godlike corporate synergy. Of course, a big reason for this software was to weed out the bots, and it did do that for a while. Here comes the science bit. Neural networks are used in AI to create weights in biases on training data. You put your answer in, the AI then adds it to the pile of other answers, and then can work out which answer is correct based on the weight of all the other answers. Mathematically, that's how AI works. There is more to it than that, but for this, you don't really need to know anything else. So it sounds simple. However, there's a catch. To kickstart the AI training, you need human interaction. Now, if you're a little company, for legal reasons, we'll call you Lugal, you have a few options. There are some companies that offer machine learning, but depending on how much data you need training, this could get very expensive very fast. I mean, to give you some idea, last year Google said that every day people spent 500 years on captures, as if it was a good thing. Your other option is to create a bit of software and market it as a security and authentication method. It will help with your security and authentication, but not as much as it will help with training your data. It's like when a customer service rep says, your call is valuable. Your call is valuable, just not as much as their sanity when you're complaining about getting diarrhea. You went to Taco Bell. What exactly were you expecting to happen here? Then Lugal gives this software away to everyone for free with a email account. That's around 1.5 billion users. They then take that data and use it in their Waymo autonomous cars. That's why I always click randomly until they show me the porn. I mean, that's great. And if everyone in the world did it, it would make a difference. But right now, all you're doing is helping the software. Because if you're always in the group that guesses wrong, they'll give less weight to your future capture answers. But on the bright side, you did still get to see that porn though, didn't you? It's the same method that Amazon is using to train robots to do simple repetitive tasks by tracking minimum wage fulfillment center workers' movements and then firing them. Sidebar point, I'm tempted to do a whole video on how our jobs are slowly being replaced and how our data will become a universal basic income that we need to survive off of when there are too few jobs for the number of people that we have on the planet. If that's of interest to you, please write, I'd love to see a video on how I'm gonna be made redundant in the comments below. Now, if you'll excuse me, I'm off to add Google AI Trainer to my CV. How do you feel about this? Are you happy about your labor being used in this way? Or are you impressed by their sneakiness? Personally, I'm unhappy about not getting paid for all this work, but I'm kind of so impressed that I begrudgingly can't find myself getting mad about it all.